Hey, it's Alex from Board Game Co. And as of today, Ohio is officially on lockdown. We are officially on shelter at home. We've already been encouraged to stay at home as much as possible and practice social distancing. But as of today, it's official, uh, unless you're an essential place of work, stay at home. So I'm probably gonna be probably going to be doing a YouTube video every single day to help prevent me from going stir crazy. And for today's video, we're going to be doing a top 10 list of games that are better than Monopoly. So for this list, the specific criteria I had is it has to be a game that has some degree of economic engine going on or some degree of similarity to what you get from playing Monopoly and that it's also an easy to pick up game for the most part. The one exception would be the last game on this list. Number 10 is going to be a harder game and this, this list is going to be ranked in order from the easiest to pick up to the hardest to pick up in my opinion. So number one off the top we have For Sale. For Sale is an incredible light, it's a little right behind me over there. For Sale is a light easy game, plays in around 20-25 minutes or so per game, plays best with four to five players and it is an incredible kind of bidding game. You go round and around bidding on various properties in the first half of the game and then the second half of the game you turn around and sell those properties for as much money as possible. It is incredibly easy to explain, it's incredibly easy to pick up, it has the, the, that bidding aspect and that economic engine aspect, aspect, and it plays in 20 to 25 minutes. This is not a game that's going to suck out your whole afternoon, rather you can play it four or five times, have a blast, it is both easy to pick up. If you want an economic game that's going to give you that feeling of reward that you get when you play Monopoly, I mean Monopoly does have this aspect of, look at that, I'm a tycoon, I won, I, I outbuild. Unfortunately, that package comes along with a lot of bad game design from player elimination to players being elim mostly eliminated but still in the game to, to roll and move. There's just a lot of bad game design in Monopoly, but the core idea of an economic game that rewards you for playing a game is an attractive concept. So For Sale will give you that in 20 to 25 minutes instead of four hours and dragging on and who knows what. Number two on the list is Las Vegas. Las Vegas is an incredibly fun game. This is a beer and pretzels, laughing with your friends while you play. In this game, you're going to be rolling to, you're gonna be rolling dice to put them on casinos and earn the most money at each casino in every single round, in each round of the game. The game plays out over five rounds and in each round you're slowly putting your dice in different casinos and whoever has the most dice in each casino will win the game. This, this game devolves very quickly into just laughing and fun because there's a lot of scrooge in the game. If you have an equal number of dice in a casino as another player, neither of you will win, neither of you will get any of the money there. So you end up in these weird situations where even though you had the most, someone else catches up to you and suddenly the guy with two dice gets all the money there. It is a lot of fun. It is beer and, pretzel, beer and pretzels. It's easy to explain, easy to teach, and again, plays in 20-25 minutes. This is an incredibly rewarding experience that I highly recommend. Number three on the list is Century Spice Road. Century Spice Road already ups the ante a bit. This is, uh, I personally prefer the Go Gollum edition of Century Spice Road. I just find the artwork more attractive, but either one is a great game. They're both, they're identical identical games just with different artwork but in this game what you're doing is you're doing some card play so every round you're going to be picking up this car these cards and you're going to be playing a card and playing a card and on your turn you can either play a card or take back your cards to start the cycle again. Throughout the game you'll also be acquiring more cards as well as trading those all these gems you're acquiring in for point cards. So doing the game you're building up this engine of how these cards interact off of each other this card is going to turn two yellow gems into a red gem and a green gem, and this one will turn a red gem back down into four yellow gems. So you can build up these cycles of cards that play off of each other in an incredibly rewarding feeling. Combine that with simple gameplay, simple rules. The rules are, you know, two pages back to back, easy to explain, a beautiful artwork. This is an engaging, engaging game that I highly recommend for anyone who's looking for that, that economic feel in a fun, accessible board game. From there, number four on the list, we have Chinatown. Chinatown is absolute madness and I love it. I cannot tell you how much. Chinatown is emotionally draining but so how much you'll be screaming at each other. If you like that negotiation in Monopoly, if you like that phase, you're like, I'll give you Bar, uh, boardwalk and you give me the two reds and if you like that negotiate negotiation in Monopoly, Chinatown's entire game is negotiation. The entire game is yelling and screaming and board positioning and screwage. You'll often trade with a third player just to get stuff that another player wants to have an edge over him in the negotiation. The entire game of Chinatown is 
all about board positioning and trading for that board positioning. It takes uh, the simple concept of negotiation and board games and distills an entire game exclusively around that one concept in a way that is simultaneously hilariously fun while also draining. After a round or two of Chinatown, you are exhausted. You're just sitting there, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't scream anymore. I can't try to get my way anymore because it's, I've just spent the whole last half hour trying to tell you why you're an idiot for not accepting my deal and you clearly should accept my, accept my deal and now we both lose because you're, it is emotionally draining, but it is emotionally draining in a hilarious, fun way. Number five on the list is Acquire. Now Acquire, in a weird way, is the one that I consider most akin to Monopoly, at least from a spiritual kind of successor point of view. Acquire came out in 1964. This is an old game. This is the oldest game on this list. And Acquire is often brought up as one of the, the best combinations of an older game that is simultaneously incredibly good game design. It is it is, it, it's all but stock manipulation in various hotel chains, and there's, it's a, it, there's a def, de decent amount of luck in the game as you pull tiles from the bag for the board positioning, but it combines that luck with a lot of skill around when to buy into or out of a hotel chain that's growing or, or shrinking. There's a lot, it's all but stocks and, and positioning in those chains, and when to figure out when do you want to sell the stock while the, while a hotel's doing well and it's on the way up, versus when to, you know, keep holding on because it's going to keep going up. Is it going to go up? Is it going to shrink? Do you want to sell out quickly and then try to break down the hotel chain? There's a lot of tremendous gameplay is distilled into this game, and yet it's still it's still only two to three pages of rules. It still teaches fairly quickly, fairly easily, but it is an incredibly good game. This is the oldest game I personally have in my collection, uh, excluding things like chess, for instance. But if you exclude chess and maybe a few other abstracts like that, this Acquire is the oldest game that I have in my collection, and for good reason. It is distilled down into tremendous stock taking a uh, tremendous stock taking a stock manipulation board game that is it's very simple to learn very simple to teach and is yet very rewarding it's very very rewarding to play number six on the list is raw raw is an auction game so, so, so similar to for sale but totally different than for sale. It is an auction game where every single round you're, you're drawing tiles from the bag and then at a certain point, as you put these tiles into the board, at a certain point an auction will be decided. Either the game decides an auction or players decide to call for an auction. When that auction occurs, the players have to sit there and go around in a circle trying to do a one-time only bid. This is a lose it, use it or lose it shot. This is not a going round and around and constantly escalating it. This is you have one chance to make a bid and that bid will either win you the, win you the tile selection or someone else will outbid you. One of the other. You do not get a second chance here. And that tenseness from that one chance to bid is incredibly tense. It's incredibly engaging. It makes you feel rewarded when you play that tile that no one's going to, you know, outbid you versus when you sit there and try to escalate someone else to push them ahead. It, it is... It is tense because you only have one chance. You only have one ch chance to, to make that auction count. And what you're bidding for are these tiles that work together or sometimes hurt you in different ways. So there's a degree of set collection in the game. If you have these five tiles, they'll get, end up getting you a ton of points. So the tiles at any given point are worth different amounts to different players. These five tiles might be worth more to me than they are to you. And you can use that, that differentiation to your advantage. It's not a pure level playing field where everything is the same. It is a very, very customized auction return because of the fact that it's all about set collection. It's all about getting certain combinations of tiles. In For Sale, for instance, For Sale is, does have an auction mechanic, but for the most part, the, each property has the same level of value to every other player. There's some degree of variance of having a selection of different types of properties, but for the most part, they are equally valuable to everyone. Ra, because of the fact that it's different, because of the fact that every auction return is going to be unique, it, it provides these fascinating interplays of how each auction will play out. Number seven on the list is Power Grid, another auction game here. Power Grid is this, it's, it's, a, it's more of a board state, I mean I included Power Grid on the list, I prefer, personally prefer Ra and For Sale, but Power Grid has a board state that makes it more familiar to those looking for, for that kind of game, meaning if, when you, Ra is a little bit more abstract, it's a little hard to get into, but for a lot of people, especially someone coming from Monopoly, uh, Power Grid has a board that will make you feel more at home. Uh, it looks weird, but the, board, the presence of a board helps add to that. To that gameplay feel. So in, in, in Power Grid, you are constantly bidding for different power plants to figure out the best way to combine the board state as well as the power plants you got to maximize your energy output. You're constantly trying to provide energy to different cities and the way that the different players bid on different resources and position their board state will lead to drastically different 
situations that are drastically different economic engines that are present on the board. It is, uh, it's, it's also a pretty old game in terms of well, not, not compared to Macquarie, but it's also, it's been around for a while and it has a pretty high ranking. It is simultaneously very, it, it's very attractive in a weird way. It's got, you'll see if you take a look at, I'll, I'll drop some pictures in here. You'll see that the, the board is, is very interesting to look at, but the gameplay itself is, is very, very well done. It's a very tight, very rewarding game. From there, number eight, we have Lords of Vegas, and this one is another one of the hilarious but hilarious combined with incredibly well done gameplay meaning las vegas is a more of a beer and pretzels and chinatown is a good game with just mentally draining funny arguing but lords of vegas is uh, all about casinos and all about getting getting certain board you want to get control of the board at different points you want to trade with other players as you need to to help yourself build up better casinos. So it has a lot of similarities to Chinatown, but with a less of a focus on negoti pure negotiation and more of a focus on risk management. There is a lot of risk management in this game, which I really appreciate. There's a lot of times we try to sit there and roll dice to, to try to figure out the best way to increase your board presence. And there's a lot of risk. This one, this one more than any other game I've ever played, really feels like you're gambling the entire game. There, every decision you make that will help you get forward in the game, that will help you grow and help you improve, also has a healthy degree of risk that comes along with it. And that risk really makes you feel like you're constantly gambling. gambling. And the, the, while some decisions will hurt you and it can be problematic, meaning you'll often expect X and get you know, we'll constantly roll a one, which doesn't help you, but over enough decisions, it balances out, and there's a decent amount of risk reward, and it feels very engaging when you play it. Number nine on this list is Concordia. Concordia is a very elegant, yet very simple game that is all about, it has that, if you recall from uh, Century Spice Road, you have this a selection where you're constantly acquiring more action cards and as you play those action cards at a certain point you might have to spend an action to pick up those action cards and it's a very interesting gameplay. Concordia has the exact same thing just with a, a deeper meteor game behind it. In Concordia you start with a certain amount of set action cards that all the players have identical options in front of them and as you go each turn you play a card which determines your action for the turn but then some of the actions you take involve buying more action cards which both give you better actions as well as more options of how you want to play out your turn before you pull back all your cards. It is incredibly simple yet incredibly rewarding to play. It's all about moving around, getting that board positioning, building your resources, getting getting enough resource production of the goods you want while slowly acquiring these action cards that also not just give you options for how to play the game, but each action card also determines how you're going to score points at the end of the game. And, and the whole game merges together beautifully while being incredibly simple to pick up and teach, and yet incredibly rewarding and a lot of strategic depth to the actual gameplay. Finally, number 10 on this list, and number 10 on this list I hesitated to include because this is the furthest thing from an easy game to, do, to, to play. It is actually fairly easy to teach, comparatively speaking, but in terms of the nuance of the game, this is a punishing, punishing game to play. It, it's, I very much hesitate to put it on this list because for people looking for a replacement for Monopoly, start with everything else on this list before you touch this one. But number 10 is Food Chain Magnet. Food Chain Magnet, I, I, I felt I had to include it just because of how good of an economic simulation it is in food chain magnet you are you are building up a restaurant chain and you start with one restaurant but uh, throughout the course of the game you can start getting more restaurants and the whole game is is incredibly punishing and tight in its decisions this is not a game for the faint of heart it is easy to teach but it is punishing and a single mistake can cost you the game this is a game where you want to play it with the same people you want to learn it together and grow together in it because as as you play you can't play this against somebody who knows the game and expect to win unless that person is helping you learn and doing a good job helping you be a part of the process of learning the game picking up the game but this is not a game that is going to equally balance newcomers and people who played it before at all it is it, the, the problem is in the beginning of the game you're constantly getting these milestones these milestones are various cards that give you unique abilities that will give you a unique advantage compared to the other players and these milestones if you do or don't get them how you get them and compared to the other players these things will break the game there are multiple milestones and they all give you an incredibly strong advantage but you have to get them you have to make sure that you you run out and get those milestones so you're the first person
person to get the refrigerator, now you can actually hold on to food round to round, which gives you a lot of leg up. Are you the first person to get free salaries? Well, great. You can get three pay. Three of your employees are, you know, no salary cost to having them. These are incredible, unique advantages in the game that are incredibly punishing if you don't get them. So this is a this is a tough game to pick up and play, and so take it with a grain of salt. But past that beyond that it's an it's an economic game like no other it combines food production it combines marketing it combines board state and uh, restaurant upgrades developing a neighborhood it, it combines a lot of simple yet beautifully combining abilities and, and processes that results in an incredibly rewarding game. This is a, this is a, a, a the way we put it is, by the way, in my group is we put it as, we call Food Chain Magnet, magnet Economic war, Warfare. It is a game where it's all about the economy, but it's, it's fighting back and forth. One player sits there and starts developing his burger production. Great, start a bunch of advertising campaigns for pizza so that nobody cares about his burgers. That person starts pivoting to pizza. Well, fine, switch your advertising campaign to drinks. Uh, you know, if, if you're true, well, he'll respond to that by potentially adding more houses so that there's more demand and he can more easily sell his burgers. Well, you'll respond to that by cutting prices across the board and suddenly everyone wants your burgers instead of his. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And if you're playing against well-balanced players, it is a masterfully produced game with a lot of give and take that is incredibly rewarding as it is strategic, as there is depth. This is just an incredible game. Uh, in terms of my personal favorites in this list, I would recommend off the bat, I recommend, I mean, all these games are incredible, but if, in terms of if you're, if you're coming from Monopoly and you're looking for something that's better than Monopoly, I'd recommend starting with uh, perhaps Chinatown, For Sale, and Acquire. Those are great, great simple to pick up games. Century Spice Road is another good one. Again, all these games are good selections, but you don't want to jump straight into Food Chain Magnet. I'd even caution against jumping straight into Concordia. I'd probably start with Food Chain Magnet, sorry, not Food Chain Magnet, I'd probably start with For Sale, Chinatown, Century Spice Road, and Acquire. Those are four excellent picks to begin with that will give you a nice selection of different gameplay styles that will be a great replacement for that Monopoly game in your collection. Again, Monopoly is a great experience. If you're having fun with Monopoly, excellent. If you're looking for a replacement for Monopoly, this list of 10 games is a great place to begin. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Alex from Board Game Co. You can subscribe down below, ring the bell for notifications so you can find out when we put more videos. You can like, comment, let me know what other videos you want. I'm, I'm a huge fan of putting out the videos that you guys ask for. So if you ask for something, I'll probably do it if I can. I hope you enjoy this video and until next time, have a good one.